Hello, uh, this is Christian with Coach Stop Motorworks. I'm just uh, gonna give you an update here. Um, it's been a little while, but uh, I've got a uh, 1985 Mercedes 300 SD. It's about my third old diesel Mercedes. Um, and I wanted to do some improvements here. So just a little backstory. This car was sitting, the owner said, about six years. Kids said probably more eight to 10. So I'm gonna lean towards the eight to 10, uh, but it was sitting for, uh, like I said, eight to 10 years. So let's take a quick look at it. Um, I've already done a buffing on it, a couple washes and buffing, just a full clean out as much as I can. As you can imagine, there was, uh, this was a home to many creatures. Obviously looks a lot better on camera, but, um, just to, let's give you a little quick walk around here. So it's got a hundred, 380 miles, thousand miles on it. So it's definitely been well used. Tires are pretty dry rotted, as you can see. But I got an appointment for that in a couple weeks. There is some rot on the uh, wheel well there. A little delaminating on the back window. But you know, all in all, it's gonna be a great little commuting car for me. Um, so. Just some things I had to do already. Uh, and we'll get into the purpose of this video as far as doing some uh, seat repair and blower motor repair. Um, so yeah, I just had to do a full clean out. I mean, I took all the seats out. There were some mice nests in those. Cleaned that out. That dramatically increased or uh, decreased the smell in here. And just had to wipe everything down. I mean, everything. Door, door cards, um, leather, roof anything you can wipe down uh i've done um long list of things i've already done here but i'm just gonna keep walking you around here uh, and take the key out it's kind of annoying so um all the windows have been window tracks have been greased some motors have been replaced uh there's some slides in there that i had to get from uh, mercedes source and they were great uh I replaced the gears in the odometer, so the odometer and the tripometer work now. Um, those you can get on eBay, pretty pretty inexpensive, pretty easy to take apart. You just kind of pull this out. I haven't put it all the way back in because I think there's some bulbs I need to replace in there, um, or might be on their way out. Uh, I'm trying to think what else here I've done. Oh man, a bunch. But so what we're going to get into is uh, this seat just sags pretty bad and so uh, I think there's probably some broken springs under there so I'm going to show you how to get into that um, but let's do it continue walking around here before we get into the work so um, some of the things uh, typical maintenance stuff all filters and um, belts and you know oil changes and stuff like that so I flushed the power steering pump two new filters here is your initial fuel filter and then this is like I guess your secondary fuel filter before it um it goes into the ejection or after it goes to the ejection pump uh yeah so I've replaced those filters uh new belts and I've driven a little bit about a couple hundred miles now and you can see they are loose again so now I gotta tighten them up so belts will stretch uh and then so it'll be time to retighten them this one's a real pain to do um, just to get around because you got to take that off, which is kind of a pain to get back on. So I'm going to try to do with avoid taking this tube off. Um, new rate, new uh, overflow cap because that one was pretty corroded and just dry rotted. Uh, new pump for the washers, new wiper blades, you know, easy stuff. Uh, new valve cover gasket and I put some washers on the nuts here uh, because I wasn't able to get this tight enough. And you want it snug, pretty tight. You don't really want to barrel down on it. Um, I was having an overheating problem. Uh, it didn't get into the red when I had the heat on, but if I would turn the heat off, it would. So I put a new thermostat in there. The old one looked fine, but the problem is it sat there for 10 years. So um, without getting open and closed, it opened and closed. So it kind of just congealed closed and wouldn't really open. Um, so far, that's been working for me. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that that was my issue, which would be great. Uh, and you know I've done bulbs and stuff, um, new brake master cylinder, uh, some of the line, the brake lines were corroded, new calipers in the front and 
both fronts, uh, new brake pads all the way around. Um, some things to check in here. A lot of times your electrical issues are associated with these fuses. So uh, what I recommend initially before you start uh, going through um, you know, whatever particular accessory might not work is take all of these out and clean all your contacts here, top and bottom. Um, I recommend getting new fuses, but if you're in a pinch and need to reuse ones, make sure the ends are all cleaned up and sanded. Uh, and I put a little, very little bit of dielectric grease on these connections just to prevent them from corroding. You can do the same with these other relays. Um, but like I said, that's usually your first, that should be your, when you first get the car and you're realizing some things aren't working, start there. Start at your fuse box here because uh, otherwise you could just be chasing your tail here when really you're just not getting a good power source. Um, and, you know, with a car that might have some ice nests in it, you're going to run into some wires that are chewed. So there was some, there is some under here that I know I'm going I'm to have to fix. Um, and uh, as you can see, some of these door lights are super bright. I actually got them on eBay. Um, I don't even know. They're, I think they're $8 for six of them. So I just went around the car and replaced those. Um, some other areas that you might want to check is you're going to want to pull this out. You've got some screws up here, and I'll go into this later um, when you're checking your blower motor. But you, there was a nest under there when I first got the car. And once I got rid of that, that was like the last one. And then I really was able to, you know, get most of the smell away, which is just, just brutal. <laughs> really, it uh, really gets after you. Um, but yeah, so I mean, overall, it's been it's been pretty good so far. Like I said, I'm going to uh, tackle the seat that's broken here. That I think there's some broken springs. And for some reason, the blower only works on high, not low. So I want to investigate that, and we'll walk through that together. Um, gosh, I'm sure there's other things I'm missing. The fuel sending unit's got some dead spots in it, I was noticing, so I'm going to try to pull that out. There's a bunch of videos on that. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to walk you through it, but um, essentially you're going to pop this seat forward to undo it. There's a little red latch here. Pull that back, lift it up, pops out, and then this, there's a screw under here on each and one on each side. And then you're going to go up and out because there's like a little you can kind of see I don't know if you can see but there's a uh, channel back there so you got to pop the seat up and then it'll pull out and there's a little access hole right around here where you can take the fuel sending unit out um, just a quick overview but like I said there's tons of videos on it don't want to bore you guys with it so I guess there's nothing left to but to get to it I'm going to tighten the belts first um, before I forget and then we're going to uh, start tackling that seat, see if it can make the ride a little bit more comfortable. Uh, and we'll get to the um, climate control unit. Stay tuned. All right, so some of the stuff I'm doing this week, I'm trying not to get my spotlight on you guys, but to give you good lighting here. So as you can see, um, I had three broken springs in here, which is probably why my back was hurting a little bit driving. But what I did was just kind of splice some bars in here. So I uh, I bought some bars at Home Depot or at uh, Ace Hardware, and I'll, I'll link down the size here uh, when I check it out. I just used saddle clamps. I did two on each side of the bend, as you can see. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. Well, looks okay, but it's definitely strong. It's definitely working, um, as you can see here. Let me see if I can get a better light here. Yeah, hopefully this is showing up pretty good on camera. I apologize with daylight savings, it's uh, hard to see because it's dark so early. So, uh, but yeah, overall this is uh, definitely a lot better. It's definitely holding. So, put the seat back together and cross it off my list. All right, seat is in. Ooh. Definitely a lot better. I'm not leaning to one side anymore. <laughs> Alright, so the next thing, sorry if you can't see me. I don't know if that's any better, but it's dark out like I said, so that's what we got to work with. Alright, so what I'm going to work on now is trying to get the blower motor to work. It only works on high. As you can see, it's already pressed in, so 
When I hit the high button, it only works, and this one doesn't work when it's on low. What I was told is there could be a break in a solder joint inside the control module back here. So what I'm going to do is I think I need to take the faceplate off here and the bezel. And I believe I need to slide that down. Um, so I need two hands to do that. So I'm going to work on that and I'll bring you back. Bye. All right, so if you're not sure how to get this cigarette lighter tray or your ashtray out, um, you have to put the car in uh, on on so you can pull your gear shifter back. You've got two screws. Sorry, I already did this and wasn't recording. Pull the screw out there. And you got another one right there. Undo those. Be careful not to drop them in the back there. <laughs> not sure you'll find them again. You just kind of shake it back to side to side. You can take it out. Um, you're going to have, I put something down, you're going to have a, what do you call it, a light bulb into here, and then obviously your bigger plug there, which are the ones that are right here. Sorry again, I'm doing this for the second time. Um, now I need to get my keys to get this radio out, and I'll bring you back. Alright, so I got the uh, radio out. I uh, had to modify some keys that I had in order to get that out. But, you know, it's out now. So, what you need to do is, there's two screws. You can see them right there. There's one. And there's the other. So I'm going to undo those. And this should let me this should just kind of pop out now. I think there's probably also a bulb in here that I'm currently not, or that currently isn't illuminating, probably because it's dead. Alright, so this should slide it down a little bit there you go it pops out all right obviously be very delicate because you got these tabs right here that are hardly holding on um, and looks like if I'm gentle enough and take this out All these wires are pretty stiff. So I'm just gonna go slowly, getting it out enough here that where I'm pretty much just gonna need to undo all these uh, connections in the back here. Again, I apologize for lighting, but you know what? I feel like it felt like something is better than nothing. So I'm gonna undo all these and uh, bring you back. All right, so we got an. You you can't read that. 8 millimeter here, and uh, we're gonna undo there's one right here and one right there. So I'm gonna undo these, save you guys the uh, time of watching me unscrew a bolt here, and uh, bring it back. I believe that's all I needed to get this out, but if not, I'll give you an update. Well, with the power of YouTube, that was a pretty quick update, right? All right, so it turns out actually you don't need to take the bolts all the way out. You just loosen them because you can see that it's, no, you can't see. Now you can see that they're slotted. Um, so you got a bunch of bulbs in here that go, that light up different aspects of here. I'm going to guarantee that black one right there is not working at all. It also wasn't all the way in its socket, but, you know, duh. Cool. All right, so what you can see here, let me turn the light off here. All right, that's kind of cool. So, it's like a fiber optic thing. Uh, these little fiber optic things are all for the buttons. So the buttons all light up. But you notice, if I turn my light off, none of these bulbs, maybe the exception of this one. Nope, not even that one. None of the bulbs for the climate control unit are on. <laughs> 
So I need all new bulbs for that. Uh, like I said, it wasn't too bad to get in here. I sure wish I had them now, but I don't. Um, and I'd have to order them. Uh, so we're just going to proceed in taking this guy out. It looks like the only thing that's left holding it on is right here. Let's see, can you see it? Yeah. That right there. So I'm going to grab a, uh, grab my little flathead here and see if I can pry that guy off. Try to remember that this thing is older than me. 84, so I'm trying to be careful with it. Alright, I got another one right here. Sorry, this lighting is terrible. Be nice to me in the comments, please. There we go. All right, now let's bring you into the workbench. Hopefully we can find, uh, I can show you our culprit here. And much better All right, so here's our unit. Like I said, I don't know if, this, I heard this is a common problem, I'm not sure if it is, but uh, my low fan speed control wasn't working, just the high. So I'm going to low. And to get into here, obviously it's gonna be on this side of the unit, so now it's over here. You've got a little tab right here. Um, so we're going to pry that back. I think. Oh, yes, yeah, so you got three tabs one center and the side. So I'm going to try to pry that back and open it up, but I'm going to need another hand. So. Unless you guys want to give me one, I'm going to put you down for a minute, and I'll bring you back. Alright, so, as you can see, I ended up breaking one of them. I recommend using a very, very small screw flathead, or a knife. That probably would have been a good one. Um, so let's pry the rest of this open now. Alright, we're in. Alright, so bring this in. So, again, this is the fan control side. What we want to do is just kind of look for any, um, any signs of broken welds, or I mean broken solder joints. And right off the bat, so this is usually where it breaks, right there. That last one on the end. As you can see, that one's not broken though. I am seeing a bunch of ones that aren't even soldered. And I guess that's on purpose. I mean, I don't see any raceways, you know, the light green going to the points like there and there and there and there. So I'm guessing they're not used, but oh, you know what? There is. I don't know if you can see some brown corrosion in between there. And I wonder if those are kind of fusing together. I'll clean that up and see what I can find out. All right, nothing looks really bad there. I mean, there's some corrosion over here. Not sure if the corrosion would cause it not to work on low though. <laughs> so, Unfortunately, I don't think necessarily this is my problem. Could be yours. I'm going to clean these joints up here. Plug it in just to see if it worked. I am very, uh, I'm not very optimistic. I was told uh, by an old school Mercedes tech that I was talking to today that generally this is that weld that's broken, and this isn't. So, uh, I was kind of hoping this would be an easy fix. Doesn't look, doesn't appear to be. Now, no, that's pretty good right there. Gen so a lot of times these welds kind of just 
uh, with the vibration of the engine kind of wear out over time and uh, you just have to just heat the solder up again usually you're good to go so I'm going to clean up a bunch of these other joints plug it in I'll bring it back and see if it works all right so I'm not actually sure if I had fixed it and it was working before or if it was working before but if you have the car on here um, if I put it to whatever direction I want it to shoot at put it on high I guess it's different when the car's not actually running because it can't operate uh, the vents but so I got on a high obviously right you can hear it if I put on low I don't know if you can hear that but it is blowing just very, very faintly. Very hard to hear. And it seems like, like I said, maybe it's different when the car is running, but high works right away. If I turn everything off, hit my direction. I got nothing. But like it, there's definitely a contact in the low button that might be needs to be worked in a little bit. But it's definitely working. So let's go off. Direction again. It's like it doesn't want to start in low. Starts in high, then can go to low. If I like hold the low button. And that could be attributed to maybe the fan, the blower motor is about to go out. But I hope this is a little helpful. Um, like I said, I showed you where that solder joint should could be. That could be one of your failures. Um, also, to kind of give you an impression on how low the low actually is. <laughs> Very faint. You really got to feel it with your hand. Uh, you can hardly even hear it. So I'm going to button this back up together. And... Um, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the thermostat. I'll probably bring you guys back in the morning um, to see if that had fixed my issue. Uh, what I was having an issue with was this was running at the lot, at the tick between 80 and 120, so 100. I don't know. You know, I, I'm not good at math here, guys. 80 to 120 is a difference of uh, 40, so 100, yeah. So it was above the 100 degrees Celsius mark. And the only way I could get it between that and 80, um, which really would hover around uh, the 100 mark at 70 degrees outside, was if I had the heat on, which means I had to have the windows down. So uh, I'm hoping the thermostat is going to fix that. I've been juicing it for the past couple of days. But you know what? I'm going to fill you in with that in the morning. Have a good night, guys. We'll see you later. Just kidding. All right, so I decided, you know, while I got this thing out, just to pop off the back end of this. And... Looks like there's a little toggle switch here. And look at these contacts. They're all corroded. So if I push this guy, I don't know. I've got to figure out how to push them up. But yeah, these are all just corroded. So how do I get you without the shadow? There we go. So I'm going to clean those guys up, and that's probably a big part of my issue why I had to weirdly push into this button. So, all right, I'm going to take care of that, and I'll let you know if that fixes my problem. So, now I'm going to check the blower motor. You got three screws here, here, and one there, and one under here, and undo these. That one's just kind of like a, a plug one. I will tell you, this is a real pain to get back in. And make sure all your carpets are tucked in because this whole back unit comes off together. It kind of slips under there. I'm going to try to do this. Now, if you have an older car that sat for a while, you're probably going to find a mouse nest in here, which is what I did. So I've been in here already. 
So we got that out, set that here to the side. And this box right here is where your blower motor lives. So looks like we got some screws on here, here, here. I don't think there's ones on the back, so I'm gonna undo those and I'll bring you back when I can see the blower motor. Top tip, when you're gonna put this back in, see that that ring right there? And see this tube right here? That needs to fit inside of that ring. Like I said, not easy. You're gonna kind of angle it in like this and then tilt it. So in, tilt, up. So you need to get that connected in there. So all right, I'm gonna see if I can get to this blower motor. All right, so I got the uh, panel down. This is your power lead into there. You got a screw there. There's another one over there. I'm in here, so I might as well just check it out. It does work. I'm not seeing, I was seeing some smoke earlier when it was on low. I don't know if that's because there's something in this tray or if the motor's going bad, but from here, nothing looks really bad. I can definitely smell something when I'm running it on low. And it doesn't necessarily smell like an electric fire, but it does, it's smoky. So, cause for concern. I'm going to get into here and see what I can see. Alright, well, I hope this was helpful. Um, didn't necessarily track down why my load doesn't work. I mean, it, it kind of works, but there's a little bit of smoke in there. I don't know what it is. But... I hope some of those uh, troubled spots that I showed you, you know, maybe help unlock where your problems might be if it's not working at all or if it only works on high. Um, and the, the seat repair, pretty cheap fix. Um, I mean, I went to Ace, saw those little saddle clips were like maybe a buck fifty. So we probably can get them a little cheaper at other places, but I don't know, for 30 bucks, fix three broken springs in that seat and it's definitely going to be much much more comfortable ride. So, hope you enjoyed today and you'll see my new project here. Uh, take it easy, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.